welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host on the website that teaches you how to play guitar, banjo, and mandolin. Today is a big foundational banjo lesson. I've already done a lesson, a broad overview of our banjo rolls, which you'll find on the site, but today is all about forward rolls. Okay, and I found that there's several misconceptions that people have about forward roll, so I want to talk about those, tell you what a forward roll is, then we're going to learn what you just heard, uh, bow them cabbage down, um, but we're going to learn three different variations of it, leading with different fingers, and that may not make a lot of sense to you right now, but I promise you, as you build upon this banjo education, that's going to come back to benefit you because we're not sticking you in a box to where your forward rolls always have to start with a certain finger, okay? So I'm connecting those circuits deep down inside your brain to let you know that your forward rolls are free to roam wherever they may. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, banjobenclark.com. You can join as a Gold Peak member. You can have access to hundreds of videos, tabs, and rhythm MP3s for all three instruments. I'd be honored to have you on board. I have the tabs for this, a 20-minute video lesson, um, and also three different speeds of MP3 rhythm tracks that you can download, practice along with at home. If you'll stick with me through this lesson, you will be able to play Bow them cabbage down by the end of it, I promise you. Let's jump into this forward roll expose. Today's lesson is all about the forward roll. Okay, I wanna tell you what a forward roll is and I wanna give you some variations. Then we're going to apply that to a song that it seems everybody uses to teach these basic banjo techniques. Bow them cabbage down. We use that just because it's a really simple mel melody and it's got very standard chord changes. So we'll get into that in just a second. Let's talk about what a forward roll is. If we're playing Scruggs style banjo, you know that we're playing with three fingers. We're using our thumb, our index, and our middle. So a forward roll simply means that we're going to play through these fingers in a forward direction. So if we were going to start a forward roll with a thumb on that fifth string up there, to play a forward roll, we would then play our index finger, and then we would then play our middle finger. So we're going in that direction, that's forward. Now we can play any strings that we want, okay? We don't have to play just those fifth, third, and first strings. We can do the first three strings. Okay, so there's a forward roll. But let me clarify something that I, I get a lot of emails about. Forward roll does not have to start with a thumb. Okay, matter of fact, we can start our forward roll with any of our three fingers as long as we continue to go in that forward direction. So if we're gonna start it with our index finger, let's start it on that third string there, where will we go next? Well, we go to our middle finger next, then we come back up to our thumb. So if we were to play a forward roll leading with our index, it would sound like this. There's a single forward roll leading with our index. That's the pattern that we're going to start using on Bull Dumb Cabbage Down. Now, we could also start it with our middle finger leading. So if we were to play it first, where would we go next? Then we'd play our thumb and then our index. So a forward roll leading with middle would sound like this. So when we take those three different combinations, starting with our thumb, starting with our index, and starting with our middle, and we think about all the different strings that we could be using, suddenly we have a lot of variations that we could use to play a song simply using the forward roll, okay? Now let's apply that to boil them cabbage down. Let's go ahead and throw the first line of tab up there. You may or may not be familiar with tab. If you're not, I have a completely separate lesson on the website. It just teaches you how to read this tab, so you may want to watch it first. But we've got um, four measures here on this uh, first line, and each one of these measures has a different chord. So for each one of these chord changes, each one of these measures, we're going to play a different chord with our left hand. So we're going to bring in the left hand with this as well, and I want to show you those basic chords. The first is a G, but since our banjo is tuned to open G, if it's tuned correctly, we don't press anything down. That's why there's just a bunch of zeros. Now when we get to measure two, we're going to play a partial C chord. And what I want you to do is place your index finger on the first fret of the second string. And then with your ring finger, I want you to play the second fret of the first string. 
So there's a partial C chord. Now the third measure, we're going back to G, so we'll go open again. And then in the fourth measure, we have D7. And I want you to put your index finger back on the first fret of the second string, where you had it. But then our middle finger is going to be on the second fret of the third string. And that's where our D7 position is going to be. Okay, now if you'll notice, every one of these measures has four rolls in it. It has multiples. But you see, there's eight notes in each one of these measures. Because this song is in 4-4 four, four time. Don't let this overwhelm you, but it's 4-4 four, four time. That means there's four beats per measure. And each one of these notes is an eighth note. So each measure gets eight eighth notes. Okay. Now, the problem we have there mathematically is that if each one of these measures gets eight eighth notes, eight notes, and our four basic four roll is made up of three notes, what's eight divided by three? Well, it's two and two thirds. Okay, so we're going to have to play a partial roll in there somewhere. So let's just look at measure one, see what I'm talking about. We're going to start with our index finger on the second string. We're going to play a forward roll. So there's a single forward roll. Then we're going to play another one. But then the last two notes of the measure are just going to be part of that forward roll. We're going to come back to our second string and then play our first string. So let's just play measure one by itself together very slowly, starting with our index finger on the second string. Done. We're done with the first measure. Can we play it again? Okay. So now what we're going to do is start that pattern over again, leading with our index in the second measure, but we're going to play a different chord. This time we're going to go to our partial C chord. So let's get back on that partial C chord. We have our index finger on the first fret of the B string, ring finger on the second fret of the first. But our right hand, our picking hand is going to do the exact same thing. We're going to start with our index. We're going to play two and two thirds roll. Now measure three is exactly like measure one. We pull our fingers back off, start back over with our index. And in measure four, we go to our D7 position, index finger on the first fret of the beat, second string, middle finger on the second fret of the third string. So this is the first measure that our picking hand has to change strings. Okay, we've been playing just the fifth string, second string, and first string. This time we're going to have to move our index finger down so that it plays the third string. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play measures one through four very slowly. And remember that I have another video here on the site where I play the whole thing through very slowly as well as MP3 rhythm tracks for you to download and practice along with. Here's going to be the tough thing. The tough thing is going to be to keep from putting a, a pause after each measure. Okay, it's one thing to just play your forward rolls and get that going pretty fast. It's a little tougher whenever you have to stop two thirds of a way through a forward roll and begin again for the next measure. Okay, so that's something that you're going to have to work on. You can use those TEF tab files that I have on the site um, because we want there to, every note to have the same duration. Let's try measures one through four slowly. Good. Now, if you work on that and get it up to speed, you'll start to sound like a banjo player. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Now, as we go to the second line, we have some 